So Ohio, you might have heard, is suing five major drug companies for fueling the the opioid epidemic, apparently. Um, the state of Ohio has sued five major drug manufacturers for their role in the opioid epidemic. The opioid epidemic. Look at that. Oxycontin. One of the biggest killers in this country. But these shitbaggers don't give a fuck that half of the country is addicted to their shit. And people are dropping like flies every day. <sighs> they think their shit is safe. Well, it ain't. Marijuana is safe. All right, the state of Ohio has sued five major companies for their role in the opioid epidemic. The lawsuit filed Wednesday. State Attorney General Mike DeWine alleges these five companies helped unleash a health care crisis that has had far-reaching financial, social, and deadly consequences in the state of Ohio uh, and elsewhere. But anyway, I just have to throw in this uh, fact here that the Attorney General here in question, Mike DeWine, is a Republican. So it's kind of out of, he's stepping out of the shell of the Republican Attorney General stance, which normally is Big Pharma lap dog and guard dog and attack dog and whatever other kind of dog they need, usually. Um, one second here. Yep, just checking. All right, sometimes that happens. Uh. So the companies are Purdue, the ones that make the Oxycontin, Endo Health Solutions, Teva Pharmaceutical Industries and Subsidiary, Cephalon, uh, Johnson & Johnson and Subsidiary, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, and Aller Allergan. Uh, excuse me if I didn't mention Insys Therapeutics. They're not on this list because they're not being sued because in Ohio... If their product got to Ohio, it would have been delivered through one of these other companies, mainly Teva or Johnson & Johnson, I'm guessing, which are bigger companies that basically distribute pharmaceuticals. So the lawsuit, only the second such suit filed by a state after Mississippi did so earlier this year, accuses the companies of engaging in a sustained marketing campaign to downplay the addiction risks of the prescription opioid drugs they sell and to exaggerate the benefits of their use for the health problems such as chronic pain. Now we know if you study it or if you hear about it from me that cannabis is the number one um, thing for chronic pain because basically all the medical marijuana states, chronic pain is the most common uh, symptom that people cite to get medical marijuana and over 90% of them report later that it works so I don't know why you would go into some life changing mode of addiction and risking death for chronic pain when you can treat it very easily with, chron with chronic cannabis <laughs> which I always use um, to treat my chronic pain, which I always have because it's chronic. So even while I'm sitting here making a video, I might need to once in a while medicate because I'm in pain. And this works. So right now I'm, I'm feeling pain in my neck and in my lower back area. And it might be a little much to get through this video. So we're going to go ahead and see how long it takes to, to get rid of that pain. Oh shit, what do you know? It's gone. Just in case. Yep, it's gone all the way. Feels pretty good now. I'm not even, all I feel is just like a nice warm sensation in my body. Pain's gone. If it came back like five minutes later, it ain't gonna, but. I got gotcha. you. And by the way, pain's gone two hits ago. I'm not going to die if I keep medicating. All right. There's been times when I'm in my life when the pain wasn't gone after two Vicodins. 
Pain wasn't gone after 10 Vicodins. Pain was still fucking on level 10 and above. This is real pain relief right here. I'm not getting fucking intoxicated or anything. Like, this isn't making it so I can't finish making this video. So, anyway. <clears throat> uh, Dwayne's office put it in a press release Wednesday that the lawsuit alleges that the drug companies engaged in fraudulent marketing regarding the risks and benefits of prescription opioids, which fueled Ohio's opioid epidemic. Quote, we believe that the evidence will show that these pharmaceutical companies proposedly misled doctors about the dangers connected with pain meds uh, that they produce, and they did so for the purpose of increasing sales. DeWine tells NPR, all things considered, and boy, did they increase sales. Now, the thing about it is, he's right. You know, like, they lobbied to be able to manufacture as many pills as they can with no limits. And now once you got a warehouse full of these pills rotting away, they're getting bad as the time dates get closer to expiring. they got to get rid of them. They have tried everything they can to get rid of them, and they've done everything that they can to get rid of them. So by the late 90s, DeWine's suit says each of the five companies had embarked on a persuasion scheme targeting doctors whom the state positions as victims of systemic misinformation. Defendants persuaded doctors and patients that what they had known, that opioids are addictive drugs, unsafe in most circumstances for the long-term use, which they convinced them was untrue, and quite the opposite, that compassionate treatment of pain requires opioids. Oh, well, now, come on. Asked by NPR's Robert Siegel whether doctors had a role in, of their own in overprescribing potentially dangerous medication, DeWine says more fault rests with a culture created by these companies. This was not something that the pharmaceutical companies just woke up someday and just started to do a little bit of, he says. I mean, there was a concerted effort for an extended number of years to really pound this into the heads of doctors. And when you're told something time and time and time again, there's a lot of advertising that is being spent. Yeah, it takes a while to turn that around. Now, the thing about it is, is sure they created a culture where the doctors were a little bit more lenient the doctors were like okay this isn't as addictive as heroin it's just vicodin or it's not as addictive as morphine it's just oxycontin or something you know or oh this is better for you than vicodins because it doesn't have the acetaminophen in it and let's not even talk about the long-term damage that these pills cause they're you know they're over prescribing comes at the caution of overdose potential like we you know if you're saying and i'm not faulting people for being you know unintelligent or a little risk-taking behavior maybe or whatever it might be but when you throw people a bottle full of fucking pills and two of them is enough to kill you or three of them a certain number of people are going to overdose and maybe even die off of them just because they're just a little bit not as informed about these pills or maybe they're just a little bit more of a risk taker when it comes to taking pills. Who knows? But what I am saying to you is not everybody should be trusted with a bottle full of deadly narcotics. <sighs> In a statement provided to the Cleveland Plains dealer, a spokesman for Jansen, one of the defendants, called the lawsuit legally and factually unfounded. Jansen has acted appropriately, responsibly, and in the best interest of patients regarding our opiate pain medications, which are FDA-approved and carry FDA-mandated warnings about the known risks of medications on every product label. You know what, asshole? That's only so you can cover your ass when a lawsuit comes up. You can be like, oh, look, it's on the labels. And you don't need to throw that briefing down here on, you know, in this article or whatever. That's a disingenuous kind of like, you know, condensating, like pointing your finger down at people while you're talking to them. Shut the fuck up. Are you fucking kidding me? We know it's FDA approved. We know the FDA puts their little fine print 
warnings in there with all the side effects and it looks like a fucking encyclopedia and shit. So shut the fuck up. You're just a stupid lawyer. You know, stupid lawyers are paid just to like parrot shit. That's all you are. You ain't got no fucking skills at being a lawyer. But anyway, um, it is not legally and factually unfounded, to be honest. In my opinion, it's spot on. And you, my friend, are a fucking idiot and a parrot. So, you know, you put you put risks on labels that you know, the first thing I ever did when I grabbed my prescription of fucking pills from the government as a VA patient, is I took the labels, the little things that you're talking about, that big wad of paper, and just threw it right in the garbage. Because you know what the fuck the pills are good for, and you probably know what they can do to you if you do too many of them. Or if you're out addicted to them for decades, and you have to get your liver transplants, and whatever, man. One of the worst offenders, in my opinion, on that list that they have up here Unless for sure incest is on there, you know, through distribution. These guys right here, Purdue Pharma, they're the biggest fucking scammers. They're the biggest. I've read every lawsuit involved with these guys. These guys are the quintessential big pharma when you're talking about fucking big pharma that wants to crush marijuana. These guys and incest, who are the two biggest purveyors of money going against legalization efforts, as well as... The two most readily, uh, rapidly, rampantly dumping opioids into the fucking community from coast to coast. And wherever marijuana laws are strict, the stricter they are, the more opioid deaths you'll get. The stricter the marijuana laws are, the more opioid prescriptions are written, the more opioid addiction is uh, dealt with uh, at the uh, you know um, medical professional level, more people are checking into the emergency room with overdoses, and more people are checking into the morgue with overdoses. That's where marijuana legalization is is in in ba- in dire straits, like in Ohio. Purdue Pharma, the worst ones with the oxycotton. Another defendant told the Plains dealer that it had been involved in seeking to combat widespread opium addiction. Yeah, right. Give me a fucking break. No way, dude. As long as you still manufacture and crank out bottles of this shit, it doesn't matter if it has time release or any of that. Who the fuck cares? That doesn't mean shit to an abuser. You just make their job of abusing it a little bit more of a ritual, and you fucking know it. So shut up with your fucking hyper, super, like, over-the-top bullshit. Oxycontin accounts for less than 2% of opioid analgesic prescription market nationally. Yeah, well, you account for well over 10% of the fucking deaths at the morgue, okay, of opioids. So don't even don't even act like you're not like dumping the fuck out of pills. You know, and that is a fun number, 2%. Okay. There's hard numbers to prove that that's because of Vicodins and uh things like hydrocodone on that level. This is oxycotton, which is oxycodone, which is even more concentrated than hydrocodone. Is that what I'm I don't know. Either way, it's I'm not too like a Mr. Geek about what pills are, but I'll tell you this, man. Oxycontin is the one that a lot of people I knew in the 2000s died from, all right, quite frankly, in the Detroit area. I know a lot of people that died from that shit. And if it wasn't from that, it was from heroin because they started on that, and that shit's expensive. Oxycontin is fucking expensive. That's why it only accounts for less than 2% of the opioid market, because you're not just dumping the shit for low prices. And even on the street to get the shit in the black market is not cheap. But we are an industry leader in the development of abuse deterrent technology, advocating for the use of prescription drug monitoring programs and supporting access to naloxone, all important components for combating the opioid crisis. 
just like the pharmaceutical industry, to not really try to cure the problem, but to just try to attack the symptoms or the side effects. You know, you're not trying to cure the opioid addiction or the Oxycontin addiction. You're just putting this uh, naloxone out there and you got these drug monitoring programs. Whatever, man. This is the least you can do because you're wiping the fucking masses out with your shitty product that should be banned. And by the way, I'll back back over here to this other dickhead. This guy that talks about the FDA approving this and the FDA warning you about that. That just fucking proves to you that the FDA is full of fucking shit too. Are you kidding, FDA? You're sitting here just going to act like you know, Oxycontin is okay and fentanyl is it's good. Yeah, that's approved. How? And even if you did approve it, I'm pretty sure you didn't approve it for people just to like throw that shit out the window for anybody to grab with all the talk you shitheads do about marijuana um edibles looking like something that you know, like a Skittle or some shit or a gummy fucking bear. Give me a break. And by the way, those aren't even deadly. You can eat as many of those marijuana-infused edibles as you fucking want, and you'll never die from it. Neither will a two-year-old kid. But when you got these jokers over here making pills like Oxycontin, which already tastes like candy, and then you got fentanyl mouth suckers and mouth sprays and shit like that, you're just begging for people to accidentally uh, come home to see their kids dead from accidentally sucking on their fentanyl sucker. So, whatever. The crisis shows no sign of ebbing soon. As all things considered notes, the state of Ohio estimates some 200,000 people within its borders are addicted to opioids, a number roughly the same as Akron's entire population. And Akron is one of the medium-sized cities in Ohio. It's a... probably we're just reeling right now from the opioid epidemic. In a release Wednesday, Devine says he's filed a suit in Ross County for a reason. Southern Ohio is likely the hardest hit area in the nation by the opioid epidemic. Well, guys, the numbers don't lie. This is your pie chart for Ohio. As you can see in 1999, what did it say? There were fewer than 164 deaths that year, 53 from heroin. I mean, I don't know why they're they're hiding this other number. They're like, oh, yeah, there was a, this total here, 164 total. But only 53 of them. So you're talking 91 of them was from pills, was from Oxycontin, was from whatever. I know heroin's a lot less prevalent in society than pills, but you got to you gotta tip your hat to the fucking, the people that have like basically swindled us into thinking about, you know, what drugs are safe and what drugs aren't. I guess that would be the FDA, whoever writes this drug schedule bullshit. Heroin is not even as deadly as regular fucking approved prescription drugs. Everywhere you look, even where heroin is at a fucking all-time high, like in Florida, opioids are still beating it. But anyway, they went from really low on the totem pole to really high. Ohio saw 2,106 people die from opioid overdoses in 2014 with heroin accounting for 1,208. Um, Now, another reason why heroin is kind of chipping away at that more, you know, it's more than half, and it has been for a while here in Ohio since about 2011 or 12. And what what you get is because there has been crackdown after crackdown on these opioid uh, manufacturers and on doctors and on prescribing and this and that and the other and the, the fact is is they've 
actually made some progress at curbing um, and making it harder to get on the black market. The costs are up, and you know, people that are prescribed them are really tightly held, you know, held to the standards that the DEA actually wanted them to be held to. Like, you can only get this prescription one time unless something serious is wrong. And basically moving away from treating chronic pain with opioids in general. Like I said, that's in medical marijuana states why people are not dropping like flies. Now you look around and you see this chart here. <laughs> Ohio is up over the, it's in the darkest of the dark numbers. Uh, California, Florida, New York, am I seeing this right? Are among those dark numbers. Now, you might be like, wow, it's up there with them guys. Yeah, actually you are like that because those states all, with the exception of Florida, which population numbers between Florida and Ohio are probably somewhere in the same ballpark. So Florida is pretty crazy too. Um, these are I'm guessing per capita. I don't even know what this chart even is, so I'm just going to say this is a CDC, CDC study. Ohio is among some of the most highly concentrated uh, overdose situations in the opioid crisis. So there you have it. Um, how do I feel about this lawsuit? What is my overall opinion about it? Well, to be honest... Um, it's just one little caveat. It's just one little, like, throw a rock at this thing that's called the drug war. And hopefully you penetrate a little portion of it. In this case, you're throwing a rock at Big Pharma, who essentially controls the drug war all the way. I mean, they write the rules. They write the Look at this. These are the crooks doing the bidding of the, the drug war. They get to sell these drugs to you and say that it's okay and it's safe and it's not addictive or downplay the addictiveness. Oh, it's, it's not that addictive. It's not as addictive as this or that. I don't even know what they say. But they just act like this is just normal for people to take for chronic pain. It's not. They act like it should be. It isn't. They don't care that it isn't. These drugs are just as dangerous as heroin. Let's face it. You might be like, oh, no, it ain't. Heroin could be laced with this or that or heroin this or heroin blah, 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 blah. For a lot of reasons, you could say, you know, heroin is, is more dangerous. Well, you know, prove it. Prove it, dude. You know why these are these are more dangerous? Because it's just like the broken glass theory. If you see a big chunk of broken glass, it's not that dangerous. Because you can just pick it up off the ground and put it somewhere where it's not going to hurt anybody. But if you don't see the glass, because it's so small, it's going to go in your foot. If you don't see the glass while you're taking a drink of that water with a broken glass piece in it, it might cut your throat open and you might die. And that's the way these pills are, man. Someone takes a couple of these and they think, oh, you know, it didn't really kill the pain or fight the withdrawals or whatever the reason they took it is. And anyway, and the next thing you know it, you take one more and you die. Or you drink a beer after you've been on a couple of them and you die. They don't report enough on these overdoses they would rather show you a picture of a marijuana grow house getting raided where they show you a couple of shotguns and a pistol and a pile of various like a pile of cash that adds up to a couple thousand dollars and you know some bags of weed and some plants and some grow lights and shit they'd rather show you those pictures than picture than tell you that somebody just overdosed in your town because they drank too many beers while they were on their uh, Vicodin. Because it's just, that's just the way it is, man. Big Pharma writes the rules of the drug war. 
They get to sell you this shit. And then they get to tell you that marijuana is dangerous. And marijuana is a gateway drug. And they get to tell you that marijuana um, is bad for you know brain development. And marijuana teen use is going to go up if you legalize it. And drugged driving is something that you should worry about. I'll tell you what drug driving really that I worry about is people that are drug driving on this shit right here. And then when the, the wreck happens, then they don't even get a toxicology report done. And even if they did come back that they had some Oxycontin in their system, as long as they had a prescription for it, nobody was the wiser. And the report probably never got written. So fuck you with this bullshit drug war and telling me that this shit's safe. And I, that's why I agree with this lawsuit. But like I said, it's just like throwing one little rock against this big ass fucking wall. And we're putting little cracks in it here and there. And this is just one of those little cracks. Like telling Big Pharma, hold the fuck on. And if nobody did this, if nobody ever did this lawsuit, all these companies right here would do what? You think they would slow down? Fuck no. They would ramp the shit up. They still have warehouses full of pills, folks. And they, they don't give a fuck how they get to you or who you are, how old you are. These people, Purdue Pharma, these are the fuckers that fought so that 11-year-old kids could get prescribed Oxycontin. And the FDA just approved that two years ago. I've been on to this shit. So s s pay attention. Pay attention, people. If you know some people that are on opioids, marijuana is the way. You can get off of this shit, especially if you're on this shit because of pain. It's the worst thing to use for chronic pain. Trust me. All right, y'all. I'm out of here.